Next one that's cool is autoresponder. So because again, Fiddler's a proxy, it can return information without actually talking to the web server. And there's a bunch of stuff about rules here. I'll show you an unmatched request pass through. I just wanna show you what the behavior will be like. So I'm gonna clear this again. All right. So I'm gonna make this request. We'll just do this one again. This will work fine. So I'm gonna take that bootstrap man. I'm gonna drag it over to the auto responder here and I'm gonna drop it. And what I can do now is it says, if you ever see a request for that exact URL, I want you to do something different. So in this case, I say, I want you to delay. This is in milliseconds. So I'm gonna delay it. That's, this will be a total of 15 seconds. Now I can come back here, hit control at five. I want to see if I'm pulling my CSS file off of a CDN or a vendor or whatever, what would happen if that thing was slow? And you can see what would happen. My customer sees nothing waiting for that CSS file. So again, the critical CSS technique might be a good idea there. Um, but again, it's not easy to simulate. You can go into DevTools and say, act like I'm a slow connection, but that's every request. This I can target specific requests. And I can also say, well, what happens if I get a 404? Or what happens if I return different content? So let me do this one. This is the home page. I'm going to say unlock for editing. I'm going to go over to the inspectors. And if I look at the HTML, you can see the title is Sydney. I'm just going to add on the end of that Robert just for fun. And if I come back here and say, take that off. What's happened now is Fiddler's looking for the request for that home page. It's going to instead modify it on the fly. And if all works as I hope it does, oops, sorry, I still have, my, still have my slowness turned on here. We don't want that for the rest of the demo. Hit control F5 again. And why are you not making my change here? I'll try that one more time here. I'm gonna unlock for editing. You can save this actually to the disk. So you can actually go and make a complete change to how this thing runs and store the file on your disk. So I've heard of people saying, I have to do a really important demo and I wanna make sure that it works. You can actually save off all the CSS, JavaScript, your whole site as it would come back from the server locally. And then you can set up autoresponder rules to catch and intercept so it never actually has to talk to, why are you not behaving today? I was trying to get the, dash Robert here. So I'm not sure what's going on with that. I'll pause on that one. But the idea again is if I did, if I wanted to, I can come here and say, I want to save this. We'll try it that way. Maybe that'll work a little better. I'm just going to save the response. I'm going to do the response body and I'll just store it on my desktop here and, and I'll leave that name. That's fine. So let's go modify that file. So, oops, sorry, that was still compressed. You're getting to see all the things you're gonna have to remember. So I wanna decompress that before I actually do a save. Do that again. So now I'm gonna just open this up. I'll make a modification to it again. What is that in the dash Robert? save that. Now when I go back in here, what I can do is I can drag it over and put in an autoresponder. So when you make a request for that, I want it to instead pull up a file. So I'm going to pull that one off the desktop. I'll save that rule. If I go back here, let's hope this one works. There you go. You can see it here. Where this is helpful, so we have a lot of designers and CSS people that are doing things for our site. Uh, one of them happened to be wanting to make changes. He, he thought he knew how to fix a bug in production, but again, he'd have to give it to me. I'd have to do a build. I'd have to move it somewhere. I don't want to just move it to production to do a specific test for him. I said, why don't you just set up that response, store the CSS on your own machine. Now you, he could just tweak that CSS file all he wanted, make all the changes he's hoping to do. Then when he runs Fiddler like that on his client, he'll get that different CSS applied to what, wherever he's pointed, production stage, it doesn't matter. So it was a good way to troubleshoot by cutting down that uh, cycle of having to get built by being able to just store files and do an autoresponder like that.